Welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and as you can tell from the countdown clock, the lesson is about to get started. In case you're new with this, there's a few things I'd like to show you to help you throughout the lesson. These lessons are always guided and shaped by your questions, and if you're live with us today, there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is in the public live chat, and the other is the Ask Jamin a Question button, where you can ask me a question privately, and I won't share your identity in case you're afraid that your question is stupid but it's not. If you're in the archives though, then just open up the survey at the end of that. There's a place where you can ask your question. I will say I frequently get questions from students in the archives watching a lesson from six months ago, and I have no idea what they're talking about. So please try to be as specific as possible. If you're watching this at LearnPianoLive.com, there should be a PDF and an MP3 button right next to this video. The PDF will often have additional video links inside so you can get more in-depth instruction on each of the topics. And if you're the kind of person who likes to print out the PDF so you can make the same notes on your physical version as I'm making during the lesson, now would be the time to do that. The MP3 is just a play-along track so you can practice more after the lesson. In traditional lessons, a teacher is going to actually present some new concept for maybe five or 10 minutes every couple weeks. 
the rest of the time is going to be spent applying and refining those concepts. Well, here I'm spouting off hours of new information every week, so it's totally unreasonable to expect you to actually absorb all of that. Instead, the goal of these live lessons is for you to find some little nugget of something that makes sense, but is a bit of a challenge, and for you to go practice it, because practice is where all the improvement's gonna happen. So don't feel bad if you have to leave the live lesson and you find that little thing that you're gonna practice. And of course, if I'm going too fast, you can always rewind the live lessons or replay in the archives as much as you want. If these live lessons start feeling random or meandering, it's because they are on purpose. So if you're the kind of person who wants classical training with a step-by-step -step method, then you're gonna to wanna to check out Popple Academy on the website. It's included in your live lesson subscription, so you can do both or either. And the upper levels are seriously hard work, but it's gonna take you all the way from ground zero, all the way up to being ready to enter any major music college as a piano major in classical or jazz. And finally, it's most people's favorite. This is application where we take the past concepts from other live lessons and we see how they apply to an actual real song that already exists. And since there's like a thousand different ways to play any song, you're just going to work on the version that is appropriate for your level. So that might just mean playing one minute at a time for right now. Or maybe you're working on chords or covering the full song. Or maybe you're just seeing how the song breaks down so you can better write and transcribe your own songs in the future. But whatever your level is, the goal is not not this song. So even if you don't play the whole entire song, you'll get better by even attempting a little bit of it and attempt it we shall. Island, and that is the one that we are doing today. Uh, we will go note by note, so if you've never played a song before in your life, don't worry, you can do this one. But first, my name is Jamin, welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com, and right there is the chat moderator and the camera operator and everybody, the incomparable Kendra. Oh, I'm everybody. You're That's everybody. an upgrade. Every, Thank everything you. Everything that is, yes, not right here, <laughs> right now, is all being taken care of in the magical world of the incomparable Kendra. Guess what? I know I mentioned during the kids' lesson that I had started playing Minecraft for the first time. Yes. But I didn't mention that I've also started to play one of my favorite video games ever again called Wizard 101. Yeah. And it's so uh -huh. good. Okay. And I am now addicted to it again. And I'm trying to figure out if this is related to one of my favorite uh, um, what is, with fictional novels or whatever, uh, so Wizard cool. 101. I think... So if there is a related. Wizard 101 book, um, I will be reading it yeah. as soon as possible. It's about a video game, and so like real life in a video game, um, like combining whatever. So um, that's yeah, amazing. We'll have to, after the lesson, figure out if that's the, the same thing, because that yes. that'd be crazy. Um, cool. Well, I love uh, that. today's song, uh, Cantaloupe Island. Feels a lot like Watermelon Man, and they're both written by Herbie Hancock. They're both in the key of F, and I want to show you how to uh, play this one. If you did play, let's see here. If you played just the melody for um, for Watermelon Man, that's not going to help you much here, because uh, the melody is very different. Uh, but a lot of the chords are the same, and the feel is very similar. So let's jump into this thing. The first note that we need is an F, and in order to find an F, 
I'll zoom in here and show you. Just find any group of three black notes. Those ones or those ones. Any any group of three black notes. Um, yes? Do you have a question? Um, yeah. I think I may have accidentally just combined two of the shots. Oh, okay. Or something on here. So oh. I might be. And you can't uh, get out now. I will try, but I think I may be on the screen until I figure Permanently. out how. Because you know okay. what? I'm everybody now. I just so send I, this to the thing. <laughs> I get to be on screen that all the time. That was an instruction. That was a description. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and send us to the, the other thing. Okay. We'll be right back after we figure out the cameras. There we go. So, any group of three black notes is what we were saying before. So, any group of three black notes, and then just take the one that is on the left, the note of that group of three that's on the left, and drag it even more to the left, and you'll land on an F every single time. So, the one right below a group of three black notes is an F. And we're going to play two of those and say out, out loud the words, they say. Cool. Uh, so, the next notes that we need are an A flat and a B flat. So, uh, going up through the alphabet, if this is F, then uh, this would be a G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and G is the last note in the musical alphabet, so the next note should, should start back over again at A. So it goes F, and then G, and then A. Yeah, cool. So then that's an A. That's not the note that we want. We want the note that's slightly lower than A. Not a G. That's way lower than A. We're the one that's slightly lower than A, which is what this symbol is all about right here. That's a flat sign. So we want an A flat. So it's the note that is slightly lower than A, not an A. So this note right here is the one that's slightly lower than A. This is an A flat. It's the note in between G and A. So that's the next one that we're going to play while we say theirs. So all together, all three of those notes would be they say theirs. And then the next note that we want is a B flat. So you could probably figure out if that one's an A, that would be a B. And we want the note slightly lower than B. So we want to play that one right there. And we'd say an and then aisle. Now this thing right here, this big swoopy line is called a tie because it actually ties those two notes together. So this is just one big B flat right here, all for the word aisle. So all of those notes so far would be they say there's an aisle. Okay, so that's that much so far. We need to play that A flat again and say out loud the word an. And then ocean is B flat and C together. So not literally together, but together they, they make the word ocean. Ocean. So an ocean. And all those together would be they say there's an aisle, an ocean. Two more notes and we're almost done with this song. 
this F that we started on is where we're gonna end. So that one right there. And right before we play that F, we wanna scoop into it from an E flat. So not an E, but an E flat. So we're gonna say away. All those notes together along with the track would be something like this. And a one, two, go. They say there's an aisle, an ocean away. It's pretty fast. You'll want to practice that. But it doesn't matter what octave you put, play it in. So I'll try it here. We'll start back over again. Same exact thing. And a one, two, go. They say there's an aisle, an ocean away. Okay, now we play the exact same thing again. They say. There's an aisle, an ocean away. Except now the words are different. This time it's going to be, uh, uh, where time doesn't care, it's dreaming and swaying. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and stop the track there. Let me show you that one more time. That thing right there is the exact same thing as that thing right there. Where time doesn't care, it's dreaming and swaying. Cool, so that exact same thing twice in a row, and then we have uh, three notes left. Uh, two of them we haven't played, and one of them is F. So F plays an important role in this uh, song, just like it did in Watermelon Man. Um, so then we're gonna play this C right here, so going up to C, not down that direction. Um, so up to this C right here, and then we're gonna play an E flat, but not the E flat that we played before, not this one right here. We're gonna play a C and an E flat. These are the highest notes of the song. They're right there. Plenty, food, and. Just back and forth. Plenty, food, and. Then we go down to um, F and play that. So it's a big, huge jump from C, E flat, C, E flat, F, F. Now, uh, this one right here is supposed to have uh, parentheses around it, but it's the parentheses got uh, crammed together. So uh, we'll fix that for the future if you would make a note for me, Kendra. If you're in the archives, hopefully this already uh, looks correct. So that one's supposed to be in uh, parentheses because it technically doesn't exist in the original song because Herbie Hancock, when he wrote this, as far as I know, did not have lyrics in it, but uh, jazz vocalists like to sing along and they like to sing words. So a lot of times they'll put words to jazz songs that don't have words. And uh, so then this one on this one right here, they needed like one more F for the words uh, for the word wine. So if you just hear like a saxophonist or a pianist play this song, they'll probably play C, E flat, C, E flat, F, F. If you hear a singer sing it, they'll sing plenty food and plenty wine so there's got an optional third note there f and then you just do the exact same thing people dancing in the pines okay that's the whole thing then at the end you've got this weird like break right here and this messes everybody up uh because it's just going to be like nothing these are all rests right here all four of those measures are going to be just rests so if you can do if you do that, and you can do, you've got the whole entire song. Let's try it a few times through. If you're in the archives, you'll probably want to press pause on the video and just try those phrases by themselves, because when we go along with the track, it's going to be pretty fast. But if you're live with us, just get all the notes that you can. Don't worry about the ones that you miss. You're probably going to miss a bunch of them. Uh, that's fine. Just jump into the next section. You know this one right here, that thing right there, and then this other one. Maybe all you get in that is the Fs, and you don't get the... Just get all this again. Don't worry about the ones that you missed. We're gonna play it through a whole bunch of times. Let's go. Two, three. They say there's an aisle, an ocean away. Do it again. Where time doesn't care. It's dream and swing. Okay, now that other phrase. Just do it again. They say, there's a map, an ocean. Do it again with those apps, or one of the apps. Four 
more measures and go again. Later on, we'll improvise. We'll still throw some things in here during that section. But for right now, just maybe mess with the rhythms. Just slightly different than what it was originally. with those rhythms. I'm gonna let you take over. Ready? Here we go. One, two, go. They say. There's an ocean way. And then we go again. Where time doesn't care. It's dreaming this way. So that's how the melody goes. That's all the notes that you'd play in the, probably in the right hand. Uh, but of course you could play it in both hands if you wanted to. If you're playing along with the play along track, in the intermediate uh, level and in the advanced level, we'll talk about all the chords and stuff that we were playing at the beginning, how to play the intro stuff and how to improvise over all of it. But that's all for the beginner's level, which means it's time for the feature of the day. That's right. And today's feature of the day is the term of the day, which is sequence. Sequencing, yeah, hey. uh huh. So there's a section in this uh, where we're supposed to just play um, like all white notes, and it's a great time to practice sequencing because sequencing is just when you take a pattern, some pattern, and you start moving it around. So like um, a pattern that we could do is like just a straight three note pattern, like that right there. So we could take a three note pattern, and then we could play that, and then just move it over and play the exact same thing, and then put, move it over and play the same thing and then move it over. But the pattern doesn't really matter that much at all. We could just go like that and go a note and then skip a note and then skip a note. And then move that whole thing up one. And then move it up one. Or move him down. This is also sequencing. And that's what we're gonna do eventually when we talk in the uh, intermediate and the advanced uh, versions in uh, of, of this lesson when we do that D minor seven right there. So if we're gonna improvise over that thing, we could just make up whatever sequences we wanted to using all white notes, just trying different things that use all white notes, taking any pattern. Any of these patterns we would want. Let's try some of that. I'm gonna play the track. I'm gonna play all the regular melody so you can tell where we are. And then once we get to this section right here, plenty of food and mm, right there, when we get to plenty of wine for four, four measures, we get to just make up sequences with all white notes. Let's try that right now. And a two and three. There's an I and a Go ahead and play with me for this part. Here we go. Ready? We're gonna take. I'll take this one. Plenty of food and. Food. 
Alright, that would work. Yeah, let me try some other sequences. Let's jump back in. Here we go. Ready? Get ready on those S. One, two, go. They say. Let's try this pattern right here. So we'll go food and That was pretty cool. All right, let's try one more. This time we're really gonna mess with the rhythms on the uh, melody. Ready? Play with me. there is called sequencing um, it's probably easiest on piano um, when we have a section that is all white notes um, so that's kind of a convenient little thing in this song in that in the middle there but um, yeah it's an important concept both for like improvising and also for like writing music and stuff like that if you can have some kind of um, similar pattern even if it's re a really weird thing like this like that's a weird thing that you wouldn't have very frequently in a song uh, but that thing becomes more and more predictable the more you repeat the pattern, even if you're moving around to different notes. So at some point, like the human ear goes, oh, I know what they're doing there. And so it sounds like a cool thing, even though each of the notes is like nearly impossible to sing that. It sounds like it's almost melodic just because it, it's um, got so, a lot of predictability to it. So anyway, that's sequencing. It's going to be important. But let's check out the intermediate level for today's lesson. So sadly, the lesson preview has come to an end and it's time to say goodbye to everyone watching the free streams. Of course, paying subscribers at LearnPianoLive.com can continue watching this lesson and several hundred others like it in the archives. So come on over and check us out. And if you like what you saw, at least like and subscribe and then tell your friends to head on over to LearnPianoLive.com to start enjoying this journey with us.